Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Unfortunately, today's video has already kind of been spoiled just a little bit because I am incredibly crap and actually put the post-battle results of this battle at the end of Wednesday's World of Tanks video. So, you know, there's that. But anyway, spoilers notwithstanding, I hope you're going to enjoy today's video um, because this is a very, very well-played game in a tier 9 light tank. This is Lost Llama in the T-54 lightweight. It's a tier 9 battle. And the thing about the T-54 lightweight in a tier 9 battle is that it... Well, how can I put this? You could argue, and make a fairly strong case, that as tier 9 light tanks go, the T-54 lightweight is probably the best Soviet tier 8 medium tank in the game. It's certainly better than the T-44 in just about every respect. And of course, it still has all the advantages of being a light tank. It's got the speed, the maneuverability, the low profile, the stealth, as well as remarkably tough armour for a light tank, and a very punchy gun that's very good at firing on the move. So when this thing's top tier, it's an incredibly versatile little tank. You can play it as a light tank, but if the situation demands it, you can also play it as a not quite top tier medium tank and still do quite well. Los Llamas begun by heading south to get some spotting done. Unfortunately, most of the team doesn't appear to want to actually join him. With the exception of that Comet, who seems to be in a great rush to die, but he's not going to be the first tank on the team to die. Firing, undetected, from the centre ridge line in the middle of the map is a T-49, taking a blind shot at a very suspicious-looking bush. And he's just managed to get a blind kill on the team's GW Panther. Los Llamas teammates start pinging the map centre ridge line, knowing that that's where the T-49 is firing from, but Los Llamas in no rush to head over there completely alone, without knowing where any of the enemy team are. And that's when the Yag Panther gets spotted. What is it about bottom tier tank destroyers? Why do they always love to rush forward, be the first ones to get spotted and the first ones to die? I've never understood this. Okay, you're bottom tier, but you're a tank destroyer. You usually have a pretty good gun, and you're usually pretty stealthy. Just... I don't know. I guess he didn't like the matchmaking. Well, the Comet didn't get his wish. He wasn't the first, and he's not even the second to die. With the exception of a couple of heavy tanks over on the other side of the map, hardly anybody appears to be in a rush to get involved in actually fighting the enemy team, other than the Comet there, who's already lost half of his health for his efforts. But with some of the tank destroyers now heading south, and given that Lost Llama wasn't actually spotting or doing any damage to anything from his previous position, and he's still pretty reluctant to challenge the enemy team for dominance of the centre of the map, we know that there was at least one T-49 there, and he's highly unlikely to be alone, and since there are actually enemy tanks spotted over here and the team are actually moving up to engage them, this is where he's decided he can be of most use to his team. Be real nice to... there we go. Well, he didn't get the kill, but the Scorpion G has been killed. Again, what is it about very, very badly armoured tank destroyers? <laughs> they just love being on the front lines. I, I, again, this is something I've never really understood. Oh, that's not a very badly armoured tank destroyer. It's a very badly armoured tier 7 medium tank. And as Lost Llama is moving up to get the flanking shots on the Panther, holy shit, what is artillery doing there? Well, um, dying, apparently, um... <laughs> what? Really? But why? I mean, I'm not complaining, but... But why? Why would you... I don't know. Whatever. Anyway. It's time to be a medium tank. Something that the T-54 Lightweight is entirely capable of being, particularly when it's fighting Tier 7 medium tanks. Let's see how much damage this Panther can do to him. I'm gonna go with none. Oh, hang on a second. Emil 2 just popped up. Tier 9 autoloader? Uh, nope. No, it's time to be a light tank again. Or, perhaps, a fast flanking medium. Yeah, we can do that. The team's actually winning, by the way. Uh, well, me and my big mouth. Okay, now they're winning again. <laughs> the panther stood no chance. Now, how many shots has that Emil 2 fired? To be honest, I don't know. His gun's pointing this way. Let's not take any chances. 
it looks like he is actually reloading. Okay, time to go for it. Yeah, he's definitely reloading. Handbrake turn. And finish him off for the kill. Who's next? Who wants some of this? Plenty of enemies spotted. There's that pesky T-49. This tank really is exceptionally good at snapshotting. Obviously you need a very well-trained crew and a comprehensive equipment fit. Premium consumables also help, but Lost Lama isn't actually running any premium consumables. Can I get the kill on the T-34-3? I do believe he can. Boom! Headshot straight in the back of the turret. This is actually turning into a bit of a rout. Artillery have been spotted, one scurrying for cover, one not, and now dead. That did not take very long. And I believe that, so far, is the first time he's fired at something and missed. Me and my big mouth. <laughs> it's the jingles effect. I've cursed him. I'm such a jinx. Still, be interesting to see what his hit ratio is at the end of this game. Although if you're watching Wednesday's World Attacks video, you probably already know. But yeah, they've definitely got the enemy team on the back foot here. Which is kind of surprising, considering that the enemy team completely dominated the centre of the map throughout the whole game up until now. Although we don't actually know what the disposition of the enemy tanks were. It could be that the enemy team were camping just as hard as Lost Llamas team, and the T-49 was in fact the only tank up here, on the centre ridgeline. Oh, he's been spotted. Is that T-49 again? And missed. Then again, he was firing at a very small, very fast-moving target, half the distance of the map away, but, well, then again, he did that and hit the Lorraine. Um, barely slowed down, certainly wasn't fully aimed. This gun is full of surprises. Four enemy tanks left. One of them, T26E5, is about to munch on friendly artillery, but as he was lining up to take the shot, he got himself slotted by the friendly Emil 2 from halfway across the map, and Lost Llama is making the run on the Doom Turtle, but don't forget that T-49's down here as well. And there he is. And right in the face with a 152mm high explosive shell, but it didn't really do an awful lot, did it, because of the strong frontal armour of the T-54 lightweight. And now the T-49 is dead, repositioning to deal a dose of very rough and unconsensual butt sex to the Doom Turtle, who's just managed to get his tracks back up. Now. Here's the problem for the Doom Turtle. It doesn't really matter which way he turns. <laughs> Somebody's going to be shooting him up the ass. So, no kill for Lost Llama, but the Doom Turtle's down. That's what matters. And that just leaves one enemy tank. A T-29 American Tier 7 Heavy. He's not AFK. Or at least he wasn't AFK. He's got two kills to his name. He was actually having a fairly good game. He was last spotted here in the town where he was winning the fight against the heavy tanks on Lost Lawn's team, but he hasn't been spotted for quite some time. And nobody's interested in capping at this stage. <laughs> Not when you outnumber the last tank on the enemy team uh, by this margin. And it's just, I mean, even the artillery are rushing to try to get the kill here. And there he is. Oh, bless him. Still on full health, cowering at the back of the map. <laughs> He's not going to be on full health for very long as everybody scrambles to get that little bit of extra damage in and get that kill. He's fired. He's surrounded. Yeah, he's pretty much dead. Yeah. It, it's hard to criticise the no-cap kill-all decision when you do outnumber the last tank on the enemy team by 8 to 1. And the poor bugger is just a bottom tier heavy. So, that's Ace Tanker, um, Confederate and High Calibre for Lost Llama and the T-54 Lightweight with over 1,500, nearly 1,600 base experience, with over 5,000 damage of his own done. And while it may have appeared that he was playing selfishly and wasn't actually doing much in the way of the light tank spotting role for his team, he also earned over 3,000 spotting damage. 29 shots fired, 24 hits, 23 penetrations. He only actually took three hits the entire game, two of which penetrate and did damage, but it wasn't through a lack of people shooting at him. He was getting shot at, they just weren't hitting him. <laughs> because this thing is so hard to hit when it's barreling along at 70 kilometers per hour. He actually lost money on this game. He started the game with 20 rounds of non-premium APCR, which is standard ammunition on the T-54 lightweight, 16 rounds of premium APCR, but he fired so many shots that he ran out of standard ammunition and had to start chewing through his premium ammo supply and that's pretty much what cost him 
a profit on this match. Although he didn't lose that much money. See, that's one of the limitations of the T-54 lightweight, and it's not much of a limitation. It, it doesn't carry a huge amount of ammunition. Still, if he'd been running a premium account, even chewing through half of his premium ammunition supply, that would have still been a profit. So, that was Lost Llama in the Tier 9 T-54 lightweight Soviet light tank, which by happy coincidence also happens to be the best Tier 8 medium tank in the Soviet tech tree. Hope you enjoyed today's video, folks, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.